Hi, it's Nick from The Run Testers, and this is our review of the Hoka Tecton X. So the Hoka Tecton X is Hoka's first carbon plate trail running shoe. It's a carbon plate shoe, in fact. There's two of them in the midsole. Uh, it costs £175 in the UK or $200 in the US. Uh, it's got a 4mm drop from heel to toe and the snack height is 33mm in the heel on the men's, 31mm in the heel on the women's, which obviously drops to 29 and 27mm at the forefoot. But the shoe weighs 260 grams in my UK size 9, which is 9.2 ounces. So what you've got is really a kind of fairly lightweight trail racing shoe with a not too aggressive outsole so it's built more for kind of harder trails kind of all terrain rather than real deep mud or anything like that the upper is a jacquard engineered mesh with a gusseted tongue you can see the way the tongue kind of extends all the way down the front there like Cocker has done on a couple of its shoes recently there's a fair bit of padding around the heel and a bit of kind of extra support but not much at all at the base of the heel there and then a very thin tongue you know trying to keep the weight down on top of the shoe obviously as it is designed for racing there's a toe rand up front for a little bit of extra protection there but it's quite light it's quite flexible and soft it's not it's not providing a lot of protection put it that way then the midsole is a profly x midsole so that's dual density so you've got a softer bouncier foam on top the kind of blue stuff and then the kind of slightly firmer orange stuff beneath the idea is you land on that nice soft foam up the top you press in hit the kind of firmer foam beneath along with the carbon plates and then spring forward and you know head off to pvs across every distance so like i say there's two carbon plates here they run kind of in parallel down the shoe this allows for kind of a bit more flexibility and agility when you're on uneven ground when a full carbon plate wouldn't be doing much except maybe making you a little bit unstable there's a mild heel bevel to in kind of smooth out your transition a little bit um, and then on the outsole you've got a vibram mega grip outsole with light base construction it's good sticky outsole works very well on kind of harder ground but it's not got the kind of deepest lugs you'll find on hocker's range these are four millimeter lugs and uh, designed more for kind of harder ground uh, they've got kind of you know fairly large flat shape and a fair bit of exposed foam but that's not really been a problem as far as i can tell in my running so far it's not really any of the key impact areas around the heel and forefoot True to size in the Hoka Tecton X and the fit was pretty good. I don't think it's as immediately as natural on the foot as the Hoka Speed Goat 5, but overall I thought the performance for the fit was great. No hot spots, no rubbing, no slipping, uh, good lockdown, all of those things. So I would be recommending going true to size in the shoe. So the Tecton X is a good fit for me and that's partly because it's a little bit smaller than most UK 9s. Um, so normally my UK 9 is a US 10, but this is a US 9.5 and I can tell you know it's slightly shorter up front, which works for me as I'm a quite a small UK 9. Uh, however, if you do have problems with kind of Hocker's narrow uh, toe boxes, you're going to have probably a similar problem with this shoe. In fact, I found sometimes when going downhill, long downhills, kind of landing on my forefoot, I would jam my toes in, uh, into the front of the toe box a little bit during those. So I've done 65 kilometers in the uh, Tecton X uh, and I've done kind of a range of lengths of runs, a range of speed and quite a big range of terrain. Uh, I've been on kind of canal tow pass, my forest trails. I had one quite wet run where I got a little bit of mud. Not too much though, which is good. It's not really a shoe designed for deep mud. And then a fair bit of road as well. And it does perform quite well on that as well as kind of off-road. I've done a couple of progression runs and a long run where I was kind of uh, running fairly easy but threw in a fast 5k on a canal tow path just to see how it kind of picked up the pace. Um, and overall I'd say I'd like the shoe a lot but I would probably say that I don't get a massive super shoe vibe from it and I don't think it's gonna be a huge game changer in the trail racing world uh, especially as it comes with such a big price tag. So I would say I'm not completely convinced by the Tecton X as a you know as a must-have shoe for those racing on the trails in the way that you know the carbon plate shoes on the road have kind of become basically a must-have. It's partly because I'm still not entirely sure how much the plates do benefit you on the trails in terms of that kind of propulsion feel and also because I think Hoka has lots of great trail shoes um, that come in a lot cheaper and actually do a very good job of racing different distances. So I'd say the ride is firmish in a good way you get a nice amount of feel for the ground uh, and there's still enough protection here I think I did 24k as my longest run on but mostly on quite hard ground I had no concerns at all about a harsh ride or a lack of protection underfoot. It's not as cushioned and deadening as the ride on something like the Speed Goat but you know you're still getting reasonably high stack here and two layers of foam that provide good protection uh, i don't think it's got much of a rocker or anything like that and I, even when i'm on long stretches on hard flat ground i didn't really notice a huge kind of sink and pop that you sometimes get with uh, the profile midsoles or, or any kind of particular pronounced effect of the carbon plates in the midsole uh, it's a much more subtle shoe than a lot of carbon plate shoes in that sense and that's partly because i think they don't come into play so much when you are on even slightly uneven ground 
Uh, it's got a very nice light pickup. I think when I'm going uphill in particular, I notice that the shoe feels very nice and nimble on the foot. And for I think all my runs, on kind of hilly runs, I just noticed I was going a little bit quicker than I'd maybe expect, judging on you know effort or heart rate or anything like that. Like especially uphills, it does uh, you know help you move up those very nice and fast. And then actually, it's got enough protection to pound down them. Although, although maybe I think if you're looking at very long events with lots of long downhill sections, maybe there might not be quite enough protection there for some people. I think it's fine for easy paces on the roads too. But I did notice. Uh, I think a lot of people have said this is you know really good road shoe but i found when i was running on very nice smooth roads that the lugs were just a bit too sticky and the base was almost a little bit too wide and i feel like i was having too much ground contact from the shoe to kind of really roll through smoothly and quickly when road running i think it's a much better shoe on slightly uneven ground broken ground even like roads that aren't well maintained you know like potholy and stuff like that i think it feels a lot faster and nimbler on those where yeah on that completely smooth road which you know isn't what it's designed for it i don't think it feels fantastic so i wouldn't necessarily call it a fantastic road to trail racing shoe but it can do that job but i think it is much better on any kind of trail really than it is uh, on completely smooth roads one terrain that really stood out for me was on kind of dusty canal towpath and i ran a progression 5k during a long run going from about 340 a k down to kind of 328 a k i think um, and it felt very natural fast it gripped fantastically well on kind of that you know, it's very dry on that kind of you've got that slight loose layer on top on kind of very small stony gravelly track um, so you've got slight shifting underfoot each time but it bit in and gripped really well so you could run fast on that really effectively thanks to that kind of sticky grippy outsole so yeah overall i think it's a great shoe it handles a variety of trails really well and, and it, you know it is a fast shoe it's a good one for for racing um i think it's probably one of the top trail racers going but it didn't wow me and make me truly excited about the kind of future of trail shoes with carbon plates i think it does a good job but uh, i think it's still, still gonna be a slightly hard sell for 170 pounds so i've run close to 30 miles in the tecton x mixed terrain tarmac trails compacted river paths, some fields, most of it sort of fairly level, not very steep, not many big descents, not particularly technical, so nothing mountainous. But those 30 miles I did also a kind of mixture of paces, everything from kind of really slow and easy, sort of 10 minute miling right up to sort of six and a half minute miling, which would actually be kind of my marathon pace. Now in one of those runs, I actually ran sort of five miles in a Hoka Speedgoat 5 and then swapped over into the Tecton X. And I think this shoe really, it runs kind of nice and light, agile it's pretty nimble and there's a big difference i think here in terms of the kind of punchiness you feel a difference in the kind of spring that you get compared to the hoka speed goat 5 and i really enjoyed kind of that the, the function of those sort of dual carbon plates with that foam underfoot i think worked really well to make for a kind of lively run that i thought was quite exciting and quite enjoyable on the trails so just the right side of kind of exciting and lively and certainly a little bit more punchy than the speed goat 5. So one thing I think we're seeing with a lot more of the kind of modern trail shoes is that there's a bit more of a softness, you know, in the old like Oka Torrance and look back a few shoes and the midsoles used to be quite kind of firm, really. And I think the Tecton X actually managed to kind of ride a little bit of a balance here between being soft and protected, but also firm enough and responsive enough to give you kind of a bit of a spring in your step. You know, the midsole is well cushioned, but it's not kind of overcooked on that. It's not too squishy. It's not too soft. And I think, you know, the aim there with those carbon plates working together according to Hoka, was to give you sort of some kind of ground feel that was still there. And while I, you know, I don't think you get as much ground feel as something like the Innovate Park Claw G280, which I've tested recently, you know, I do, I do feel like there's a good balance with the kind of firmness and the ground contact here. You're not feeling too disassociated with the trail underfoot, and that is a good thing. I think they also run nice and light on the foot. There's plenty of agility here, plenty of control, and there's a balanced amount of cushioning that leaves the foot feeling pretty unencumbered, even on those longer runs. I also felt like there was a really quite good versatility here. I think it ran pretty well at slower paces. You know, I was some of the time I was sort of even doing kind of 12 minute paces, the kind of ultra plods that I might get into, you know, five miles an hour, which is when I'm doing 100 Ks or 100 miles, that's kind of where I dropped to perhaps even slow. It was good at that. It was nice and comfortable at that. And then when I pushed up to kind of six and a half minute miles, you know, something, I don't often run that fast on the trails, but even with that on the kind of hard compacted trails that I ran and on the tarmac, this shoe felt really comfortable. I think in terms of that kind of crossover appeal as well, it handled both sort of tarmac and trail, I think really quite well. This is definitely a shoe that will happily get you through those valley kind of villages when you're coming down out of the mountains on an ultra run before you go back up onto the technical trails again. It will handle those tarmac stretches really nicely. One thing I will say though, I didn't actually get to take this on to kind of steep downhills and descents, so I'm not really too sure about how it copes with really kind of technical steep downhills, although I have seen people comment that sometimes on, on bigger descents, bigger, harder, faster descents, that the, the midsole foam can come up and those carbon plates can come up a little bit firm underfoot. I didn't get to test that, so I sort of have to jury's out for me on that. Also, I guess, you know, I haven't put this through the kind of stability test. It's, I find there was, a, although you've got kind of softer foam, 
got that dual density foam and you've got carbon plates, sometimes that can affect the overall stability, which is not something that you want out of a trail shoe. But I found these gave me a pretty good platform to run on. I haven't tested them over kind of lots of kind of rocks and stuff and tree roots and you know the things that are maybe a little bit more challenging. But on, you know, again, on those compacted trails where you've got bits that are good and runnable, I think it was a good base to run from. I felt like there was not too much wobble, not too much rotation of the foot. You know, pretty broad base out the front here, which is sort of fairly classic with Hoka. I think, you know, yeah, did pretty well. I was impressed with that. Final thing to say, really, it's been mainly dry in my run tests that I've done so far with this. So when you've got consider these kind of four mil lugs, I've not been able to give them too much of a test on sort of super slippy stuff. But on everything I've done, the grip has been great. I have hit a couple of kind of drain covers and bits and pieces that are a bit damp, but and it's coped well. But I don't really know what happens when you start to go on kind of steeper, slippier stuff. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting. I hope to sort of at some point get to try that out. I think they've got the balance of cushioning and padding right. Not too heavy, not too much, just enough to make this a comfortable shoe, I think, over longer distances. I mean, it's definitely a shoe that I would be putting on to kind of maybe go out and attack kind of faster, sort of, you know, up to sort of 13 mile trail runs, those runs where you might want to be moving a bit quicker. But also I think I could happily kind of race up to a 100K ultra in this like a 12 hour day. I think that would be fine. One thing I do have that concerns me though with this is there's something sort of slightly odd about the, the eyelets here with the lacing structure. I don't know if you can see here, but this bit here does worry me about how durable that is. It's sort of almost cut off and exposed. It's almost like it's been unstitched and it's not quite finished on this shoe. Um, I just worry about that. That looks like it might kind of break through. I can see those kind of laces potentially cutting through or that just not holding out for too long. I'm going to be interested to see how that bears up over time, but that's one thing that I, I thought kind of worried me. Otherwise on durability, you know, from what I've done so far, there's not even a mark on this. There's no signs of wear and tear. And I think this shoe should be nicely durable. If you're looking at the Tectonex as a pure racing shoe, I think for me it kind of probably excels most over things like kind of half or full marathon distance on the trails. I think if I was personally ever going to go really, really long, I'd want a more cushioned feel and I'd probably go for the Speedgoat 5. I really love that shoe just for cruising and I think if I was going to drop to slightly slower paces over ultra distances, that would be a more comfortable ride for me. But I think there'll be lots of people who will love this, probably more experienced, hardened trail runners will find it great for really smashing out long events. I'm sure you'll see a lot of professionals using it at the big ultras this year because there is enough protection there. It does grip well, it handles a variety of terrain and you've got that a little bit of extra kind of pop from the the, ex, the kind of dual density midsole and the plates although like I say I don't think I've noticed a huge effect of the plates myself. I think if you're dropping down to very short trail races which is probably what I do more of things like 5k 10k I just go straight out for a lighter shoe with more ground feel. don't think the extra weight here and the bulk is being really offset by the plates so I would go for yeah something like the Hoka Evo Jaws that shoe doesn't really exist anymore but um you know, just a really light, nimble shoe. That's what I like to race in on the trails. Um, I still, mainly because I'm on generally either muddy or quite uneven ground. And I think plates, if they are gonna come into play on trail races, are probably for those longer races on hard ground where you've got a lot of smooth surfaces, a fair bit of flat, uh, when you can really start to get the um, benefit of them providing propulsion the same way you get from the road shoes on those kind of surfaces. The other carbon plate trail shoe I've tried is the North Face Flight Vective, which I had a little bit of a problem with the upper um, comfort wise, but I actually think that shoe was a far worse trail shoe all around than the Tecton X. It really was built very much on very hard trails, almost the road and didn't have much grip. Um, but if you were on a smooth surface, it had a bit more of a rocker and I think you got a bit more from the full plate in that shoe combined with the rocker that you get from the plates in this shoe. I think this is, like I said, it's better on a variety of surfaces. It's lighter, it's nimbler, it's more fun, and I think it's a racing shoe that I'd prefer. But if you're looking purely as the benefit of a carbon plate, then the North Face's shoe on, the, on a long, flat, hard, you know, trail run would work, I think, maybe slightly more effectively, perhaps. And then another shoe I think is really good for, for racing on trails is the Adidas Terex Speed Ultra. Um, which is a bit lighter, it's almost 240 written on it, um, and it's got a nice roomy toe box, it's got a good outside, I think that's quite aggressive and grips well in a variety of terrains, it's got a really nice light feel to it, and although I think it's probably going to be a bit harsh for lots of people to run very long in, if you're looking at a similar category to this, it's a fair bit cheaper, and I think it's a pretty effective trail racing shoe as well. You know, obviously there's two great shoes in Hoka's range, the Speedgoat 5 I think is a fantastic shoe, it's a shoe I love cruising around in, it's got a bit of versatility, you can run fast in it as well, and obviously it's a very popular ultramarathon shoe, but then the Torrent too, 
2 I think is a lot cheaper than the Tecting X and it's a light, nimble, agile trail racer. I've loved racing in that shoe. I've raced, I think I've raced at like a five, five mile race in like a local cross country league in that shoe. But I've also used it for coast to coast uh, across Scotland, which was a mix of cycling and running and that had some you know long runs in the highlands in it and it really coped very well with them so i think that's a shoe that maybe slips under the radar a little bit and i think it can handle a massive variety of runs and does so at a far better price than a tetanex so yeah overall i think it's a good shoe like i think if you pick it up you're gonna like it especially if you stick to mostly harder ground and you know it's got a bit more of an edge on technical trails than things like the flight vectors but don't think it's a massive game changer. I think Hoka has fantastic trail races already. I really enjoyed this shoe in the miles that I ran in it. I think it's lively. I think it's fun. I think it's agile. I think it's nimble. It's lightweight on the foot. I think it feels fast. I think it makes you kind of want to run fast and get up and, and move it freely. I don't, I think, you know, it's light enough that it's not going to feel like a burdensome shoe if you're doing kind of very much kind of longer miles into ultra territory. I think that's something that's really positive about it. I think the lively response really suits the kind of rolling, not too steep trails that I've been doing here in the UK, where you basically, it's kind of, it's, it's not too much an ascent and descent, but you're just doing off-road stuff. I think this suits that kind of running really nicely. I also think it's potentially a great partner to the Speed Goat 5, and it's definitely a shoe I'd consider using to race an ultra. Is it worth the £40 extra that you're going to pay over and above a Speed Goat 5? Well, I would say so for the kind of ride and the feel that you're getting. I think it does a little bit more in terms of overall kind of speed performance. Would I buy both of these shoes, the Speedgoat 5 and this? Probably not. I think you could get one or the other and you'd probably be all right. And the final thing to say is I'm currently looking for a shoe to run the Danube from sea to source. So 2,000 miles. It's going to be a marathon a day for 70 days, mixed terrain. And I think the biggest compliment I can play this Hoka Tech on X is that this is now on the shortlist as a shoe that I might consider running it in. It's definitely up there along with the Speedgoat 5 as an option. And yeah, I'm going to consider it for sure. So that is a big thumbs up, I think. You know, if I'm willing to put this through sort of 70 marathons in 70 days, I don't think I can give it higher praise than that. So guys, that's our review of the Hoka Tecton X. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.